Welcome back, I'm Joe. In today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you another kitchen product review. Today, we're gonna to be checking out this Caloric Max Touch 16 quart air fry oven. I'm gonna test the temperatures, make sure it uh, maintains the temperature, also how it cooks. Then we'll test out the, the temperature on the outside of the unit, if it gets hot, uh, safety features. Then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end of the video. So let's get started on the review. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Caloric. I purchased it from Amazon with my own money. This review is my own opinion without any sponsor influence. So let's see what's in the box for the Caloric Max Touch. Uh, first, uh, we have the main unit. Uh, it's kind of compact, kind of nice. A bit smaller than I expected, but nice for small kitchens. It's a 16 quart, nine in one air fry oven. Claims to be sear at 500 degrees. Includes five accessories, 1600 watts of ultra fast cooking, and 21 smart presets. So now let's talk about what accessories come in the box. A baking tray, air fryer basket, air rack, a crumb tray, and a rack handle. Here's your, here's your handle, and basically the way that sits, it just kind of sits like that to be able to grab the, the trays and pull them out so you don't, uh, you don't burn yourself, or you can just use some. Uh, oven gloves, and I'll leave some links to those oven gloves down below. Uh, here's your your rack, your baking rack. Again, same thing. Uh, if you see the second tier hook here, hooks like that. So the top hook for the basket, bottom hook for the rack. Here's your baking tray. Pretty basic. Looks like it's a uh, non-stick surface. And here's your crumb tray. So the crumb tray just slides in, slides in like that in the bottom of the oven. So what else came in the box? Well, we have a quick start guide in two languages. You have a Spanish and an English. The Caloric Max Owner's Guide, a nice recipe book. Looks pretty good. Some nice recipes in there. Pretty basic though. And a uh, warranty card for a one year warranty on this. The warranty card stated that the accessories are not included in the warranty. Uh, so if something breaks on them, you're going to have to try to purchase more. And uh, although I, when I went to the website, I couldn't find any of these accessories that I could buy, you know, especially the basket. It only comes with the one basket. Uh, I'd like to be able to get at least two uh, so you can swap them out uh, or cook twice as much. But uh, couldn't find it on their website. If you guys go to the website and are able to find it or if caloric, if you're listening, you know, uh, send me a notification. Let me know where I can find some of these uh, accessories. But let's go through some of the features of the oven itself. Main features you see here is this panel here. So you have a semi touch screen, which includes a couple buttons here. You have the keep warm function, which is here at the top. It's a default temperature of 165 degrees for 30 minutes, but it is adjustable between 80 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit for one to 90 minutes. The second button here is the light. Uh, it turns on whenever you open the door or press the light button. The air fry button is a selector for the 14 presets for the air fryer, and the oven button has seven cooking presets of its own. You can use the selector knob to scroll through one of the available cooking or air fry presets. So when you select the preset, it'll blink for a few seconds until it sets. Once it stops blinking, it's ready to go. It's at temperature, although the timer does start on its own. The preset light will blink until the temperature is reached and the fan light uh, is lit if the preset requires it. To make adjustments to the time or temperature, press the select the knob. You press it in once, you'll hear a beep, and you can rotate it uh, to increase or decrease your selection. The first press is for time adjustment, the second for temperature, and the third to confirm your settings. The start and stop button is to begin the heating process. When the timer ends, the cooling cycle starts. There's three ways of uh, turning the oven off or to shutting off the cycle. One is obviously hitting the stop. Second is to open the door, or you can hit the start and stop button, and hold that down for three seconds. That completely shuts the oven down uh, in case you have to shut it down quickly. If you leave the door open for a couple minutes, it'll turn off the entire oven. You hit the standby mode, again, by opening the door, it's kind of a standby mode. If you hit the selector knob, it also puts it on standby. Again, after a couple of minutes, it's going to shut down the cycle. It's going to cool off the oven. Okay. In the manual, it states that for cleaning, 
pretty simple, like any other uh, air fry oven in the market. You know, a damp cloth with some soap on it, cleans the inside, wipe it all down. Same thing with the outside, no harsh chemicals, no abrasives. Once you clean it, you can heat it up a little bit to dry it out. Uh, that'll help maintain it and, and keep it working properly. I decided to test a bunch of temperatures in here, some of the more used temperatures. The 100 degree temperature, it was holding at about 104 degrees. The 200 was holding at a high of 201. And then when I got the 300, there was a little bit more of a span, about 306 degrees. Then I decided to use the 350, which is the most common temperature. It went up to as high as 354 degrees. 400 seems to hold really well at 401 degrees. Last temperature I used is the 500 degree temperature. For some reason at uh, 500 degrees, it was only reading about 446 degrees Fahrenheit. It may have been a temperature probe moved, I uh, wasn't aware of it, but I did do a secondary test and that test 500 degree temperature reached as high as 480. I was not able to get it any higher than 480 degrees even after running it for about 20 minutes at 500. While the unit was running at about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, I decided to take some exterior temperature tests. As you can see here at the bottom of the unit, running at 500 degrees, it read as high as 224 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, kind of warm, but it did not burn or, or do anything to the counter. The glass on the door read as high as 268 degrees Fahrenheit when the oven was reading about 469 degrees, so that's very, very hot. The next area I tested was the top of the oven just to make sure that it wasn't getting too hot underneath my cabinets. And that was only reading about 125, 126 degrees. Same thing with the left side and the right side. It's a little warm to the touch, but it's definitely not gonna burn you, not at that temperature. Although the rear uh, panel uh, read as high as 323 degrees. Well, if you put your hands on it, it will be very hot to the touch. Uh, it can scold you and burn you, so be very careful there. We're going to put in the crumb tray that just slides in underneath like that. And we're going to try just some chicken. These are just chicken wings. We're going to put it into the top setting here, right up there. Close the door. Hit start. Air fry. Let's go to the chicken setting. Now, if you press the control knob here, you can adjust and adjust the temperature. We're gonna start about 20 minutes here at 435. Select again, it's 435. You can move that up and down. 450 is the highest that you have here. This ratcheting is really gonna get on my nerves. So Select it, again, we hit the air fry, chicken, for 20 minutes, we'll start at 20 minutes, 435, okay, and start. So you can see the fan setting here, 20 minutes, 435, 435 degrees Fahrenheit, air fry, Let's check out the light. That's a pretty bright light here. All right, and I'll bring you back and see how the chicken wings turn out. Okay, so that's pretty much done here. I think they were overdone at 4.35. So about 175, 176, they're a bit overdone. So I'm gonna pull them out, let them cool a little bit. So the next Thing we're going to try is some potato wedges. So we we'll close that up. Hit the start. Uh, we're just going to hit the air fry for uh, see if we can adjust the time. Say 20 minutes at 400. Select. Start. And we'll let these go until they're nice and crispy. All right, so I just finished and it's going through its cooling cycle now. I'm gonna use the rack handle here to try to pull that out. So let's put the, let's put that in there like that, see if it'll pull it out. Okay. 
looks pretty good. The next thing I decided to cook is some pizza. I had some uh, already made pizza dough. Uh, these were about, uh, about four inch pizzas, you know, single serving pizzas. I just added some pizza sauce to it and some uh, mozzarella cheese to the top of it. Ran it at the highest temperature I could get uh, under the pizza setting, which is the 450 degrees. Uh, the 500 degrees is only for the searing uh, option of this unit. But 450 was plenty to, to give us a good result on the pizza. Uh, also gave it nice uh, crispy bottom on the pizza dough uh, and the cheese melted perfectly. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons here. It's a lot smaller than my other air fry ovens that you've seen on this channel, but this one here, I was looking for a little smaller one just for my own purposes uh, and also one that got to a higher temperature. The other thing I did like about it is the price. It was at a great price point at $139 on Amazon, well within my price range for this unit. Uh, it was regular price is $169, so save 30 bucks was a good deal for me. So that was a, a, a good pro for me. One of the other things that this unit offers that a lot of the other units don't offer is the fact that you can actually change the light bulb. The light bulb can be removed and uh, change and order. You can order a replacement one uh, when it burns out or if it burns out. So that's a nice little feature. None of the other uh, ovens that I've used uh, have had that feature. This is uh, my first one with that feature, which I like having that. I really wanted this oven is obviously because of its compact size and also the, the 500 degree temperature that it claimed to be able to hit. Uh, where in my test, you've seen that it didn't quite hit the 500. It was about 480 something, 46, 47. The only thing you do have to keep in mind though is where you place that rack. As I experienced with the chicken wings that they Got a little toasty, a little dark, uh, mainly because of uh, placing them too close to the heating element. I have made other meals in this unit over the past week and a half, which have come out perfect. Uh, the only thing is definitely uh, keep your eye on the time and temperature. Don't go by what the panel says. Just keep your eye on it until you get a feel for uh, how it actually cooks, cooks the, uh, uh, the food. My other units cooked a little cooler. This one here cooks at a, a little bit higher temperature at all the settings, much higher than what my other unit was doing. Cons that I have uh, with this unit, again, nothing too major. The first con is that the timer starts when you start the process. Uh, I would love to have seen it preheat first where you have that flashing of the preset. Uh, when it stops flashing means the preheat part of it is done. I would love to have seen that uh, set the timer instead of the timer automatically start. So it will throw you off for a couple of minutes. It takes about a minute or so to preheat. The temperature that the back, the bottom, and the door, the glass door get, uh, they get very hot, uh, definitely to the touch. I mean, you, you'll burn yourself on uh, any one of those uh, surfaces. Although the bottom, because it's uh, lifted, it's got the little feet extensions on it, it doesn't touch your counter, so it doesn't hit, the heat does not hit your counter. But still, I use a silicone mat underneath it just to make sure that uh, I protect my countertop so they don't get discolored. For the back of the unit, you have to pull it away a few inches away from the wall. It does have these little uh, stands uh, uh, on the back of the unit, which doesn't state in the manual what they're for. Uh, I'm assuming it is for the distance, uh, but I also use it to wrap the cord. I guess it serves two purposes. Another con here is the fact that it only comes with the one basket. Uh, I, I use air frying a lot in, in my kitchen, as you are well aware if you watch any of my videos. Uh, I like to have multiple racks, multiple baskets uh, for this unit. I, I looked on the Caloric website, I looked on Amazon, you can't find additional racks to buy. Uh, I'd like to have at least two. It could fit two easily in here, but not available. I like to see Caloric actually add that in as part of the accessories. Not a big problem on the unit, but I uh, like to see a full uh, accessory package. And for the, the last con that I have for it, it's a one year warranty, which you have to call them uh, if you have any problems with this and they'll give you an RMA number of some sort. I'm sure they'll, they'll walk you through on how to return it, but the cost and the expense is on you. Uh, a unit like this may cost you 20 bucks, 30 bucks to send back. Uh, you know, so you got to add that into the uh, factor uh, if you're going to purchase it directly from Caloric. What do I think about this unit? Overall, I like the unit. It's compact. 
I like the price point was good. The style, it's, it's a nice sleek style. But there's a few things uh, you know, kind of quirky about it, but so every unit has its own problems. This one here is no different, but it's just going to take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, the temperatures again, much higher, which I like. Now, should you buy this unit? Well, that all depends. Like every other product depends on you. If you're looking for an air fryer, it's something that gets to a high temperature. This one here is a good choice. Uh, again, keep in mind that it's not built for large families. You know, one to two people, you probably get away with it relatively easily. Uh, if you're feeding a family of four, definitely not big enough. You want one of the larger ovens. So am I going to keep this unit? I'm going to test it out for another week or two, a couple weeks, just to make sure that I like it. It doesn't give me any problems. If it does, I'll report back here uh, in the comment section. Uh, I'll post some updates on that on this unit. Hope you enjoyed this review on the Caloric Max 16 quart countertop oven. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, also let me know below. Something you want me to try, something you want me to clarify. I'll be happy to respond to you. Uh, give me some likes, some shares. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.